What is up everybody? It's Adon with Adon Tech. I feel like I'm standing too close to that camera because I've got another camera in my hand and I am here to work on the video where I show you guys how I wall mounted my case, how you can wall mount your case, some barriers to entry you'll have, what tools you'll need, what tools I bought, what experience you need, and how easy it really is. Hey, a quick little update. Since I've made this video, me and my wife have created a Twitch channel, and you can catch us gaming over at twitch.tv slash uptiltgaming every Monday, Friday, and Saturday, where we're creating an awesome gaming and tech community that we'd love you to be a part of. So feel free to check it out if you'd like. And now, back to your regularly scheduled broadcast. All right, so I wanted to go through and list all the things that I needed, and I'll do my best to put all the parts in the description below so you can easily find exactly what I used, or at least as close to what I used as possible. You'll have two main barriers to entry. One of those barriers to entry is going to be you have to own usually the property that you're in. Renting, not really a good idea because you're enhancing a property and you don't get any benefit out of. And if you're in an apartment or something like that, usually you have to fix it afterwards. So I'd only recommend doing this if you own the house that you're in. Second barrier to entry is going to be having a case that can be mounted on the wall. And if you don't have it mounted, you can always get a shelf for a regular case, but you want to make sure that it can support the weight. You do not want anything falling off. This is in studs and that is not going anywhere, even though it might you know, shake a little bit. Similar to any sort of carpentry, you need to have very specific tools, you know, hammers, nails, screws, screwdrivers. One of the things that you'll need for this project in particular is gonna be a saw. So this is just a drywall saw, a Stanley Fat Max drywall saw. You need this to pierce through the drywall. So I guess a big asterisk on how I'm actually mounting this computer case, it is in drywall. This came out of my wall. This is how thin it is. I'm not doing it into real wood, though you do need real wood studs. On top of that, you will need a kit to allow you to run power cables from the top of the wall to the bottom. You may ask, well, Don, why can't I just get my saw, create a hole in the wall, run the wires down, and call it a day? You have the awesome fire code to thank for that, at least in the States. You cannot run electrical cable down the wall unless it is in a very specific fire code. When I open this box and show you what's inside, I can show you the exact thing that I'm talking about, but that's why you can't run that. If you didn't want to worry about the power and you had an outlet up here already, it doesn't matter. So if you're just doing the, the peripherals, USB, Ethernet, all that sort of stuff, it doesn't matter. You can do that, no big deal. It's the power that you require to have the stuff that's up to code. And after you have the box, you'll also need something that can wall mount your computer. In my case, I used a Cheetah TV mounting unit. Now let's go ahead and get into how, I guess, I got this sucker up here. So we're gonna start by turning the computer off. Don't you dare do updates on me right now. This is gonna be the computer. This is gonna be all the wiring and this is how it's all connected. So before you can take this guy off the wall, you have to disconnect everything on the wall. So we're gonna start with the power, the two HDMIs for the graphics card. I've got the audio jack. Cat 45, USB for my peripherals. So as you can see, this is where the control box is at. And this is where I have two outlets because I got a duplex and the computer power plugs into that and then the electrical cabling runs down the wall. As we go all the way down, all the wiring is coming down all the way here and it's gonna be going through anything over here to my uninterruptible power supply. So all nice and streamlined going up to my computer right up there. Oh no. Oh. Okay. Oh. The power cable was uh was around there. Definitely make sure that you know where that is at before you just start pulling. Thankfully, I've got the might of a thousand men so I can hold that and unplug it at the same time. In regards to the stuff that you need when you're going to mount this, this is the cheetah mount right here, and I've got this into at least two, most likely four studs. If you don't have the studs, this will fall. Now that it's in the studs, it can withstand easily 200 something pounds. This baby's not gonna fall. This is a VESA wall mountable case. It's just plugged in 
or screwed in, I guess more so. That way, you know, it can be held on as it needs to be. That's really all there is to it on the wall mounting side of things. And it comes down to discussing this contraption. This is the piece of drywall that was there. That's what I needed the wood saw for. This is the actual product that is necessary to go inside the wall. You have the top and then you have the bottom. The top portion has this fire code special power cable ability. When you cut the hole in the wall, which it comes with the template, then you just shove this little part inside the wall and then you run this power cabling down the whole wall. Bottom, right down there, the bottom of it also has another end that connects the power conduit too. So this makes it no longer a fire hazard. And after that's all done, it's very stiff wiring, it's all connected, then you can run the wires through the wall and out the other side. That's all there is to it. Very simple to do as long as you have the proper tools and know-how. As I mentioned, this is my third time doing it. If I had another reason for it, I'd always do it. You can apply the same practices to wall mounting a TV. And in fact, wall mounting a TV does require the same electrical conduit box to be able to run through the wall. And after that, all that's left to do is try to mount this sucker back on the wall while you're on camera. So first thing I'm gonna do, get rid of this cable so it doesn't get in the way. Pick up this monstrosity of a case. This thing easily weighs 60, 70 pounds, I'd say, because it was about 50 pounds when it was shipped, and now it's all built out. So, oh, cool, it follows me all the way down here. I love that. Oh, let's see if we can make this a success. I'm not confident, so. But I did get it. So that was on there, no problem. Okay, it's wired up. Does it power on? Of course it powers on. What do you think? I don't know what I'm doing. Well, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Again, I hope you did find this video helpful. I'm gonna reply to the people that asked for this video back in February of 2019. I hope that you guys personally find this video helpful and I hope it gives you the confidence in doing the same sort of project. Once you go back to doing this, there's really no reason not to do it again. It's very fun. I love having the computers off the wall. I love having all the wires hidden and the maintenance on everything isn't really that bad. As you saw, I can take the computer off pretty easily. It doesn't take that much to come off. It doesn't really take that much besides unplugging the wires, making sure you don't set a death trap for yourself by unplugging the power cable correctly. And that's all it is. So this has been the Dawn with the Dawn Tech. Thank you again so much for watching. Subscribe if you wanna see more interesting content like this. I hope this comes out well in post. And remember, the Don's got your back. I gotta end both of these. Hey, me again. Just before the end of the video, I wanted to give you another reminder that I've got a Twitch channel over at twitch.tv slash uptiltgaming where I play awesome games with my beautiful, awesome wife every Monday, Friday, and Saturday. And if you wanna check it out, we'd love to have you. Thanks again for watching.